So, um, now that I know that you guys have had this customly built here, my question is, and since you guys are, I guess, making it to where other people will have the knowledge to, I guess this is part, hey, you can do this, and part, this is how you do it. Mm -hmm. That being said, <clears throat> is it more beneficial, or more beneficial, um, is it, is it better to have, I guess, parts allow you, uh, this seems like it's a, a solid version of this. Right. So, but with this, if something were, and I'm, I'm theoretically asking this. Yeah, um, sure. If, if something were to be wrong with this wire, then I can take this wire away and replace that wire, and now I'm functioning again. Right. Whereas if I'm totally solid here, does, I mean, how how intricate are the pieces, I guess? And then how many pieces will you allow people, or, or will people be allowed to kind of, you know, I, I guess, no, that's a great to, question. To, to, to fix any potential problems? Because uh, you were talking about the cost effectiveness of this, right? Mm -hmm. And it seems to me that if you could fix the $5 part, as opposed to the fifty dollar part, right? You know, right. I, I, am I being naive in, in that? Not at all. No, no, no. Those are exactly. I mean, yeah. So now we have we have a, a bunch of people who have been talking about this, and it is actually occupying a lot of brain power right now, trying to figure out where. Because I, I guess the, 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 my interpretation of what you said, we are, there's kind of this. This continuum, where you could you, you could break these devices out into lots of tiny little bits and connect them with wires. Yeah. And so if the if this doohickey fails, then it's maybe a twenty cent doohickey, and just get another twenty cent doohickey part. Um, and in fact, one of the devices that we've been playing with, the what we're calling the Koki, at this point the design for it is really just bunch of very simple parts that are on a breadboard. Um, but like you said, uh, that so on the one hand, all the components are fairly cheap. It's not always true in a sense that's because there's the labor, there's the, the, labor, the cost, the time cost. Of it all. Like, and even in this case, even if there weren't labor, this breadboard, it turns out, is like five bucks. Whereas if it were on one of these little microchips, uh, one of these sort of Printed circuit boards; um, those are like, you know, a dollar uh, or less. So you might actually have a cheaper device okay. if you put it all together in a nice tiny package. Um, so there's the, so the cost thing is sort of complicated in that way. Um, there's that. Um, there's the labor. So like, if I want to distribute this thing to people and all they really want to know is what's the temperature here, then they might not want to assemble it themselves, even even if there's a pedagogical or like a, an engagement um, uh, benefit to that. Some people just urgently need to know the answer, and they just want the nice device. So you you want to account for that, but it, but there's a trade-off. And then and then there's this broader modularity question: um, Did we put the useful all of the useful things that you'd want in a basic device on that board, or are we missing a couple things? And if we're missing a couple things, what's the best way to, so for example, right now, this, th that device, this riffle thing, is uh, a little brain that has a clock on it and can record something in micro SD. Um, if we want always, or a lot of the time, to broadcast live, Maybe we should extend this board and add the, the um, cell phone chip, and then that would be the basic device. But that would add cost, and so, and also it assumes a certain functionality that maybe not everyone wants. So, and then how are we going to power it? Like we could, we could have it powered with rechargeable lipo batteries, which is kind of a cool thing to do. But in certain contexts, um, we get you know really big fluctuations in temperature. That's not great for lipo batteries. Um, you'd, want, you'd want to use a different battery chemistry. So at this point, it, this device is sort of agnostic with respect to what type of 
battery. So, but you know, if you got to the point where you said, okay, look, I know the kind of battery I want to use, I know the kind of type of communications I want to use, I know the things that I want to measure, it might make sense to put all of those on one board and then distribute that thing. So that be the core. The core thing. So, so that's a that's a, dr a big question here. What should the core thing be? Um, and it seems like it depends on who's using it. What you know? What are the use cases? In fact, there's uh, this is like the second version of the Ripple. Uh, that we're back in playing with. Uh, th th this we're calling the Ripple. It's this basic thing. Yes. Um, and the initial version, which might be ultimately the version that we would go with, or at least like the dominant version or something, now has uh, so it now has a lot of things built onto it um, that this doesn't have, and it's sort of more compact and has more features, and it actually would be lower cost. <laughs> um, it's a little harder to use at this point than this one is. So there, if, I guess that's a long rambling answer to your question. No, no, it's not at all. No, it's because the, there. <coughs> I asked it because it, it, it's not a one street answer. There, it's it's a very. I was just curious to see what you guys were doing. Yeah, like what are the considerations? Yeah. Like I'm realizing as we're talking that it, it, there are like multiple dimensions that we're kind of trying to figure out where we want to be along totally. multiple axes. So there's some to some extent. I mean, the way the, what drove this was you need something that has a certain shape that goes in the water bottle, and also we didn't know yet how to measure things like conductivity. <coughs> so I just didn't put that on, the, or at least I didn't know. So I, I didn't put that on the board yet, and I just have we have a separate board that is the measurement board, which initially was just wires on the breadboard. So we made this thing, and it would be connecting to that breadboard, and then eventually uh, we make you know the extra bit that plugs into this thing, and then that's measuring conductivity, with the idea that maybe this functionality is fairly constant, but what we want to measure um, might you know the way we measure it and what we want to measure might change. So that seems like a useful maybe way of having a certain modularity. Um, in fact, okay, so this is the water quality sensor, the ripple, and some people in public lab have uh, been interested in measuring air quality, and um, the thing they're calling that the sniffle, which we probably have to go with, I mean, because it's kind of great. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. You, you, you have to work with that. Right, yeah. yeah, and then we also, we have a friend, um, Craig uh, Versek, Grow rooms. I think he was calling that the muffle. It's getting a little crazy. That is getting silly. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but you know that and that's in fact that that's what drove the uh, the bio indicator mm -hmm. uh, discussion. Yeah. Do you want to go through that again? Uh, did we not record that one earlier? I guess we did. Yeah. Sorry, that was a, that was a long conversation. Yeah. We, yeah. Anyway. But anyway, this, it, this is this is really all right. So. I, I guess what should, I find should, interesting. You should zoom in and like to the, like, like the camera crews in the TV show. Like, yeah, there you go. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I, what I really find interesting about this, and, and it's no offense to you, baby, I love you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but it's it's really great to see it be brought, not brought, yeah, brought down, brought down a yeah. level to where it's not just science. Um, which you know, there's a there's a time and need for science, and then there's a time and need for the ability to communicate it to people who aren't necessarily dis uh, or not interested in science, but it's not accessible. Or, or no, just just that is <clears throat> it's a it's a language like any other other you know, and if you don't speak the language, you might have you know. Hello. You may have the pleasantries of it, but you don't have the the, the conversational ability of it. And the conversational aspect is very helpful when you're trying to get somebody who wants to be involved but doesn't know how. Yeah, that's great. No, that's that's really that's. I think the, the folks folks in the public lab community will be really, you know, interested about like it, to hear that angle because it's it's a. It, it's it sums up what a lot of folks are hoping to do. Oh, I, I, I think this is really cool, and, and the 
fact that you guys are you know recording this. Um, <laughs> Uh, it, 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 <laughs> no, I, I think that I think that's great because um, you know, a lot of times where y you need to have, I'm not. I hate to say make it cool or make it sexy because it doesn't have to be that, but it, it definitely has to be seen with an understanding of somebody who doesn't understand it. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm tired. I'm sorry. I may have just. No, it makes sense. No, it movie. works. No, it's, no, it's fantastic. Well, that's why, and that's why we're trying to make this as pretty as possible. It doesn't look as pretty as when Miriam <laughs> set it up there. Actually, if you, if you yeah. What's that? Oh, I was, you see these plates. Uh -huh. So we've started a new tradition, it seems, in public lab, where uh, when we do these events, so you're seeing us, like, you're seeing, like, the crazy scientist, yeah. mad scientist. I'm behind the curtain, right? You, yeah. you, this is kitchen confidence. Yeah, it says. Um, but usually, now, usually, um, when we are putting these things out, we, this, is, this is a new public lab tradition that we put the um, electronics on the on the plates, and we're, we're plating <laughs> the electronics. And it was really cool. These workshops that I mean, you should see these. The pictures were really pretty, but she organized all the different types of electronics on different plates and labeled them. Miriam's yeah, Miriam's here. non, her non, her non, electron or electrical engineering, you know, addition to this. It was, was because we had this going on, and she's like, she gave it a designer's touch. <laughs> she just came out with all the plates. So, but but that, yeah, that's exactly right. And then we tried. Well, I, I guess the really, it seems like the really cool thing is if we can. If we can do the science and at the same time make it really accessible. So for sure. Sure. so and it, 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 if, as, if, to the extent that we can make both things happen at the same time, then 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 we're winning, you know. And it looks like, uh, you know, for example, with this blinking light, um, where the rate corresponds to the temperature, so you should hold that. So that we demo this for people at home. So if you look, so the rate of that should increase. Oh, yeah. you're human. Oh wow. <laughs> you're not a machine, Kenny. You're not a robot. The secret's out now. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then the rate's going back down again. Yeah. So, you know, that there is a scientific relationship, you know, a, a solid correlation between uh, the rate of that blinking and the temperature of that thing. So on the one hand, I can intuitively grasp, like more or less, whether that thing is warm or cold, mm -hmm. and I don't need to know anything other than, and it's kind of intuitive, like faster blinking, you know, something more is happening. Um, but if I had a video camera, or, or like with a, 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 a smartphone, and I was then we could do image processing on that, and we could actually get the temperature off, you know. And then it's a scientific instrument that is as rigorous as any thermometer or would be, you know. Or and uh, so that's kind of cool. Yeah. And in the this this mode where it's just the blinking light, another thing that's neat about that is it's quite a resilient uh, technological approach because um, you know if my Bluetooth connection goes down or like Wi-Fi fails or, or the grid goes down, that's on a battery that's blinking. I could I could count, you know, and I could be like one Mississippi, two Mississippi, and I could basically say like, if, if that's connected to a depth sensor that goes down in a cistern that's underground, then um, I'll still be able. You know, it's like solar that, powered. That would be really helpful in the case of storm events where you lose power. Yeah. So that that's yeah, that's a a big benefit. Of oh, that. that's neat. Okay. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Like so, it's resilient in terms of infrastructure, and it's also resilient against. You know, thirty years from now, uh, it, you know, I imagine that we will have moved on from Bluetooth, and I don't know, it's like brain tooth, but I don't know what it's going to be. <laughs> Some crazy thing to be able to like plug in. But uh, so long as we have vision, that's always good, and brains, you know, that's always going to work. Like if if if, if some uh, society uh, like fifty years, uh, you know, five hundred years ago, built one of these things. We, and we found this, you know, it would take us a while maybe to figure out, okay, what is, what's happening here? But it wouldn't take us too long. Yeah. You know? So I, I, that's kind of cool. Rather than encoding it as like a binary stream that like you have to tell me, what, okay, what does 1001 refer to? What is, you know? 
So I, that, that's kind of fun. Can I ask a non-science related question in this? And this is more asking you, the inventor. You know, it seems like. Because like every time somebody throws an idea out there, it's like, oh, that's one more thing we can do. Yeah. At, at what point do you already have like a, a I guess a, a rough cut image of like, nope, this is where we're staying in this wheelhouse here, or is it kind of a a race of meeting the demand of the idea? That's a great question, and that's actually what we have been talking about over the last couple of days, um, because at some point folks are like, okay, so you can do a thousand different things, but we have to start somewhere. So, yeah, yeah. eventually, you know, I, I guess, you know, the, the, eventually the problem becomes, uh, there's a sketch on uh, 30 Rock uh, where they're trying to come up with new ways to reinvent the microwave. And then, it's like you can add this, you can add a radio, you can add a radio. overall they can just great, we made the uh, Honda Aztec. The Honda Aztec. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I guess I guess like it, what what do you guys do? Like is there like a, a cutoff point to keep you from making the Honda Aztec <laughs> as opposed to making the instrument that you guys want to make? It? Right, right. So that's a great yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think in the last couple of days, um, we decided that, I mean, th there's definitely been a huge component of that because once you have this little device that can record any electrical signal um, to a micro SD say, there are a lot of people who are like, I want to record this, I want to record this, this is useful to this other thing. Um, and it's been hard not to be like, oh sure, we can do that, you know, we can do that, <laughs> you know, to all those people. But uh, it seems that if we can record temperature, as, as mundane as that sounds, um, as Scott was saying, there are a lot of useful things that you can do with a temperature data logger over time. Um, and if we can record uh, depth of water, that's also something that seems kind of mundane, but it's actually, it's actually widely used. Mm -hmm. And furthermore, we were just having this discussion tonight that those are things that a lot of, you know, it's easy to and understand what that means. I, I think I know what temperature means. I think I know what depth means. We're also interested in, in monitoring conductivity, but conductivity, which is really useful as a measurement, um, if, um, and in one context, it could be just salinity. much harder to interpret what, what the conductivity value means. In certain contexts, a spike in conductivity means that um, there's something bad in your water or there's potentially something very bad. In other contexts, it means you've got some nice mineral water and uh, you know, is a great refreshing beverage uh, that's, that's good for your health. So uh, we, we were just talking about how we might focus on temperature and depth uh, to begin with. As, as we as a, a commu you know, community science uh, community uh, wrap our heads around how we want to engage with something like conductivity. Um, so I think we're, that is to say, I think we're narrowing on into one, one um, snapshot uh, milestone that would be for the next couple of months, like uh, push out there and, and get people's feedback on. But then hopefully, um, you know, the community is large, and if we have a bunch of people in parallel working on different problems, that's 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 okay too. But yeah, for the individuals, like the few individuals that that I've been talking to about developing this particular thing, I guess I think we 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 have decided that we need to focus on one thing or one collection of things. Is there a? Um, <clears throat> I, I suppose. Well, since. Since it's open source, I'm, I'm guessing that keeps costs extremely low. Mm -hmm. um, but like, uh, I've known some people to to um, invent. I can't remember the word invent. Uh, who who've made things 
Discovered. <laughs> Columbus some things. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, <laughs> no, they, they, they've made some things, and then when it came time to get investors involved and stuff like that, then the investor decision came in, and then it was, it grew into something, sometimes into the thing that they want just better, and then sometimes into a whole different thing. And that's the reason I was wondering, I didn't know if you guys had the pressure of people, um, I guess meeting the needs of the science community as well, but you know, there's always that person who wants to find a way to see, oh, this is great, it's good for the environment, or it's good for science, but it's also awesome for my bank account, and let's see how we can make this even more awesome. I was just wondering if you guys have right. had any, like, hey, we would love to give you a couple bucks for this. Could you make it do this, though? Right, oh, right, this other thing yeah. that you're yeah, um, yeah. Or is it too new in the game for that to happen? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no. Which are good problems. Yeah. Those, are, those are great problems that, to yeah. have. Right, right. There, I mean, what I have seen is that folks that are doing this sort of thing, um, you know, you'll you'll get approached, like you say, by investors, um, mm -hmm. and I've seen examples of like you're talking about of folks where. They were offered a lot of support uh, in exchange for some control over the project, and the deal was like, "Oh, we'll we'll help you scale this up really fast and have a wide, you know, impact." Um, but uh, we own the technology, or we own a lot of the technology, and we're gonna we're gonna decide who gets to work on the project. And actually, you're fired. <laughs> you <know? laughs> and, um, Thanks for being us this far. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. But we appreciate your, um, and and maybe you know here's a check for this amount. Um, but uh, you know, and isn't that the whole plot of Silicon Valley right now? Uh, yeah, much, I mean, yeah. like getting your technology stolen by the company that hires you. Yeah. There was, I, I had this great conversation with someone a while ago where um, he was. He was, uh, in his opinion, a lot of how people make money in this country off technology is it, it's, it, it's increasingly less about uh, manufacturing um, and, and maybe even not so much about research and development because maybe, uh, yeah, it's, it's more about like identifying a good idea it and then protecting that patent. Oh yeah, I mean, like intellectual property, and um, that seems like a losing strategy in the long term. You know, it's it's it doesn't seem like a great thing to base an economy around. Oh, it's a terrible thing to base an economy around. It's, it's an even shittier thing to, to do um, to, to, <laughs> to to be a squatter on on you know, on ideas. Particularly if you don't have the, I mean, come on, we all have ideas. And we all have these great thoughts, but it's another thing to actually have the, um, the know-how, or at least somewhat of a know-how to, to implement these things. And I, I really have a big issue with squatters. Yes, right. The, yeah. the whole, yeah, right. <laughs> um, right. you know, people who buy names of websites and so on. Yeah, are, yeah. Are, I came up with the idea for the flying skateboard. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Were you ta were you talking about that with respect to land too? Oh, a little bit. That's a little off topic though for what's probably going to go on the research note for this. Okay. But <laughs> yeah, we're quickly getting research into research note. Yeah, or we're on the wiki. We're this is our like left. <laughs> But this is a, original topic. This behind. has to be a podcast though, because now we're getting to the real stuff. No, no, but I, I, but I don't. <laughs> back to our discussion over here. Yeah. Forms of exchange. Um, Did it and took it apart. Here, let's uh, let me stop the video right here because I just don't want to end up losing this, and then if we start talking again, we'll restart it. Okay. And also, we don't want to be labeled as. A, What'd you say? We don't want to be labeled as anarchists. No, no, no. Well, we're just data anarchists. Okay. <laughs> we'll have we'll take our anarchist discussion off. off okay.